A 19-year-old LSU student is dead tonight, and three men and one juvenile have been charged not with her murder, but for allegedly raping the college student before she was run over and killed by an Uber driver. Now, are these guys charged because they raped her or because Louisiana prosecutors want a scapegoat to pay for her death? One minute, Madison Brooks was a bright, kind, beloved LSU student. She excelled at everything, had a million friends, and went out of her way to help everyone who needed help. The next minute, though, she was a stat. A title on many tabloids blaming her for getting buzzed and ending up in the evil clutches of four monsters. I'm sorry that I offended you that Dad, bad. Dad, get out, out, get Dad, out. I will Uber on my own. But here's the thing. Getting S aid is not the victim's fault. No matter the circumstance, no one ever asks to be assaulted and no one deserves it. You know, under Louisiana law, this was rape, and we were deeply offended by blaming the victim um, in statements regarding uh, that had she not been hit, she wouldn't have complained of things. We thought that was deeply offensive, inappropriate, and just plain wrong. Just like we handle uh, murder cases, we don't have you know murder victims that say, I consented to being killed or shot at. Why is Madison's behavior being questioned when she was the one attacked, then killed that night? How did she die? And where are the four disgusting teens that preyed upon her now? This is the tragic case of the cheerleader who was essayed, then unalived after her friends left her alone in a bar. When New Year's 2023 came around, Madison Brooks was excited for her future. She had never been happier. She was now an adult, studying at Louisiana State University, making new friends, and getting ever more confident that her future was bright. Madison, known as Maddie to her loved ones, was excelling academically. She loved school, and it showed. Getting ready to wrap up her sophomore year, she was getting straight A's, completing extra credit hours, working, and being an active member of her sorority, Alpha Phi. During the 2022 summer, she stayed in Baton Rouge to complete summer classes and get ahead of her next school year. She'd recently been accepted into the Manship School of Mass Communication at the LSU after graduating from high school as an honors student. Everyone who knew her from high school remembered the same person. Maddie was a cheerleader, a member of a dozen clubs, and an ambitious, hardworking person who always had the time to say a kind word to those around her. Madison was one of those people that seemed to have more hours in a day than most of us. She always had time and energy for her loved ones, all while studying, working, volunteering, skydiving, and skiing. Pretty much everyone who met Madison fell in love with her. They had no reason not to. She was kind, giving, friendly, and worked hard at making everybody happy. It was this Maddie who, two weeks after celebrating New Year's, lost her life in a brutal, senseless act that shocked her family, her friends, and everyone reading about this story. On the evening of January 14, 2023, Madison visited Reggie's Bar. This was the bar she also worked at from time to time. And in fact, Reggie's Bar was the usual hangout for many LSU students, including several sorority girls. So of course, Reggie's was sort of a famous slash infamous place to go, known for serving alcohol to underage kids. Students loved it, but many questioned it. How was underage binge drinking normalized in this place? Why was no one doing anything about it? Maddie arrived at Reggie's at around 10 p.m. that night. 18 minutes later, these three guys arrived too. 18-year-olds Kaysen Carver and Cavian Washington and 28-year-old Everett Lee, along with an unnamed 17-year-old. Because he was under 18 at the time of the incident, his name has not yet been released to the public. These guys, who later denied even talking to Maddie inside the bar, were seen on CCTV cameras talking, dancing, and even hugging Maddie. You see, these four had come to Reggie's bar knowing perfectly well that they served alcohol to underage kids, not requiring IDs at the entrance. They also knew that inside the bar would be intoxicated girls. Simply put, easier prey. These were not the kind of guys who wanted to form meaningful, respectful connections with women. They wanted to get down to business with women who weren't able to say no. You guys, this is sickening. 
Now, initially, Maddie had come to the bar to meet with her friends. She was not alone, but as one drink turned to a few, it got a little chaotic and the friends lost contact with each other. At one point during the night, Maddie is seen falling on the floor, heavily inebriated, after which the 17-year-old picks her up and leads her to another part of the bar. Around this time, Madison started looking for her friends. She wanted to get back to them, and she wanted to get home. But when she could not find them, the 17-year-old suggested he and his friends gave her a ride home. Madison is seen on CCTV footage outside the bar, stumbling over to their car. Up breaking news here at 6. WFB has just obtained this video. It apparently shows Madison Brooks leaving the Tigerland bar, Reggie's, on the night that she was killed. So that's her there in one of those circles. At 1.34 a.m., Madison was seen on CCTV footage sitting on a bench by the entrance door before falling on the ground again. The 17-year-old approached her, removed her cap, and helped her back on her feet again. At 1.49 a.m., Maddie got into the car with the four men. Kaysen got into the driver's seat and Madison was shoved between Cavion and the 17-year-old in the back seat. Ten minutes later, the car disappeared from the surveillance camera's area. Somewhere around this time, Maddie was essayed by Kaysen Carver and the unnamed 17-year-old. And they did not take her home. A few minutes later, they dumped her in the street and took off. Apparently, Madison was going to call an Uber to get home by herself. It's unclear whether she asked for that or the boys forced this upon her. At 3 a.m., Madison Brooks was in the middle of a dark road on Burbank Drive near Pelican Lakes Parkway when an Uber hit her and took her life. A 19-year-old LSU student is dead tonight, and three men and one juvenile have been charged not with her murder, but for allegedly raping the college student before she was run over and killed by an Uber driver. When Maddie was hit, two Good Samaritans stopped their car to perform CPR on her. They also phoned 911, and paramedics quickly arrived on the scene, rushing her into an ambulance on the way to the nearest hospital. But by sunrise, Maddie had passed away. The doctors noted something else. Her alcohol level was 0.319%, so high that toxicologists said she could have suffered from alcohol poisoning or loss of consciousness. That's right, a level so high, it means you can barely stand on your own and you risk falling into a coma. So everything that happened inside that car could not have been with Maddie's consent. As detectives began investigating Maddie's tragic death, they came upon CCTV footage of her getting into the car with the four men. Before long, they also uncovered footage from within the car. Lawyers say this video was a crucial piece of evidence because you can hear Madison Brooks communicating with the suspects. I'm sorry that I said to you that, Matt. Yes, yes, get out, get yes, out. Yes, I was Uber on my own. Indeed, one of the men filmed the whole incident, including several minutes where Carver and Lee were at the front parked while Washington and the 17-year-old took turns as saying Maddie. I know, just when you thought it couldn't get more disgusting. And here's where it gets even more infuriating. The detectives quickly tracked down the four men, identifying them via CCTV footage and the license plate, and asked them what had happened. First, they lied, saying they didn't even know this girl. Only when they were confronted with the surveillance footage did they say, oh yeah, her. Then Cavion said, yeah, I was intimate with her, but I asked her five times, and she said yes. When he was told that her alcohol level was 0.319% and asked if he realized she was too inebriated to offer consent, Cavion responded, I guess. A coroner confirmed the worst fears of Madison's devastated family. Maddie had several injuries to her private parts, indicative of a forced and brutal assault from the two men. That's on top of the devastating injury she suffered moments later at the hands of the Uber driver. Cavion Washington and the 17-year-old were arrested and charged with third-degree sex crimes. Kaysen Carver and Everett Lee were arrested and charged with being accessories to the incident. The Uber driver, surprisingly, was not charged, as he was not impaired and also contacted 911 immediately. He was cleared of suspicion. 
The three adult suspects posted bail, but were ordered to remain under house arrest, wear ankle monitors, and submit to random narcotic testing for 180 days. The 17-year-old was allowed to return home while the case went on. But as the case progressed, it seemed like it was all turning against Maddie. First off, the four suspects were determined to cover their butts and come out clean of this situation. Their attorneys used Madison's state of inebriation to explain why she got into the car with them. And they also pointed out the video of her slurring her words and apologizing to the men as evidence she gave them consent. I'm sorry that I said to do that. Yes, yes, get out, get yes, out. I will do it on my own. When the judge reviewed this video, he said, all I saw was a young girl slurring her words while the men laughed. That all he saw was a young girl slurring her words while the men laughed. This paints a really dark picture. Meanwhile, the prosecution stated that they would be seeking tougher charges of first degree sex crimes for the two men. This charge requires life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. That's right, just like first degree murder. Madison's family attorney, Carrie Miller, explained plain and simple. You know, under Louisiana law, this was rape, and we were deeply offended by blaming the victim um, in statements regarding uh, that had she not been hit, she wouldn't have complained of things. We thought that was deeply offensive, inappropriate, and just plain wrong. DA Hiller Moore doubled down. Just like we handle uh, murder cases, we don't have you know murder victims that say I consented to being killed or shot at. Exactly. And yet the four suspects attorney had this to say. Listen, this is a tragedy. Definitely not a crime. Miss Brooks was confirmed on video dancing and talking with the juvenile defendant inside the bar. So if you dance with someone, does that mean you gave consent to intimacy? Does that mean it's okay to be essayed by them? Miss Brooks asked to be dropped off at a sorority sister's house in Pelican Lakes. The driver complied. Miss Brooks left the car on her own volition, saying that she would get an Uber. She is seen on video leaving the car unharmed and in good health. That is freshly essayed by two men and inebriated past the point of walking. Honestly, you guys, I am speechless. This will be confirmed by video at a later date. What about what was already confirmed by the coroner? or what the judge said about Madison's so-called consent on video. Then there's this. During the investigation, it was revealed that Cavion Washington had essayed a 12-year-old girl when he was 15. Sadly, you heard that right. This guy had already had a shockingly disturbing history by the age of 18, and yet his attorney tried to pin it all on Maddie. Dozens of people gathered to honor Maddie's memory at St. Peter Catholic Church, as well as LSU. Madison was a hero even in death. She donated several organs, including her heart, kidneys, and saved some people's lives in the process. Her mom wrote, My beautiful angel, one and only daughter and best friend, she was taken away too soon. I promise to honor you, your legacy, and will do everything in my power to ensure no other family has to endure the pain that we face. She also created the Madison Brooks Foundation with the goal to raise funds for the safety of young girls and to spread awareness around organ donation. But the case does not end here, and it's about to get even more infuriating. We start with a tragedy that's dividing a Louisiana community down racial lines. A 19-year-old LSU student is dead tonight, and three men and one juvenile have been charged not with her murder, but for allegedly raping the college student before she was run over and killed by an Uber driver. Now, are these guys charged because they raped her or because Louisiana prosecutors want a scapegoat to pay for her death? Instead of honoring Maddie and trying to find some justice for her, many journalists were concerned with something else. Were prosecutors pushing hard for someone to pay as she was a blonde girl with blue eyes that lost her life? Was this a racial thing? And should she be held accountable, at least partially, as she drank so much, much more than she should have? For many other people, including Maddie's devastated family, these questions are senseless 
and hurtful. We're not gonna allow uh, any victim blaming to occur here. We must be absolutely clear. For this case and all others, a person's drunkenness never excuses predatory behavior or sexual violence committed against them. The onus is always on the perpetrator who chooses to take advantage of someone in a vulnerable state. Consent cannot be freely given by someone who is incapacitated by alcohol or drugs. Louisiana law defines third degree SA as intercourse that is deemed to be without the lawful consent of a victim. Because the victim is incapable of resisting or understanding the act due to intoxication. The fact that Madison was seen on video stumbling and slurring her words indicated she was in no state to consent to sexual activity. We live in a society where victims, especially women, are often shamed and blamed for their own assaults. But SA is never the victim's fault, no matter how much they drank, what they wore, or how they behaved. The rapist is the only one responsible for a rape. As the nonprofit organization Rain states, regardless of the circumstances, no one asks or deserves to be sexually assaulted. Predators target people who are intoxicated precisely because they are easier to manipulate and less able to fend off an assault. They exploit the victim's vulnerability and inability to resist. But being drunk doesn't mean someone deserves to be assaulted or that the perpetrator is any less culpable. Predators use alcohol as a weapon to incapacitate victims. A 2014 study found that 43% of SA involved alcohol use by the perpetrator victim, or both. We need to change the conversation around alcohol and SA so the scrutiny is placed on the people committing these heinous crimes, not the victims. Drinking should never excuse or mitigate what happened to them. The question shouldn't be, why did she get so drunk? But rather, why did he think it was okay to do this to her while she was incapacitated? It's on all of us to not assault others, period. If someone is stumbling, incoherent, or unable to meaningfully agree to sexual activity, the only appropriate response is to back off and make sure they are safe, not taken advantage of in their inebriated state. As a society, we must challenge attitudes that shift the blame onto victims and educate everyone about affirmative consent. The idea that consent is an active, clear, voluntary, and sober yes not the absence of a no. When you see these videos, based off of what the attorney just said, it raises questions again. Was she held against her will? Was she a willing participant? Was she intoxicated to such a level that she could not consent or wasn't in her right mind? And those are all questions that experts, toxicologists, and a judge and a jury will have to ultimately decide. While the full details of what happened to Madison Brooks that terrible night have yet to come to light, one thing is certain. Her drunkenness did not cause her alleged assault or justify any crimes committed against her. She had a bright future ahead of her that was extinguished far too soon. The greatest tragedy would be for her to be blamed in any way for the circumstances of her death. Following Maddie's death, two LSU students created a group for female students where they can ask for rides if they are too intoxicated to drive. It's called LSU Girls Rides, and the description says for the girlies that need a ride home or help from any uncomfortable situation. We spoke with two young students who are now working on a way for women to ask for help in these uncomfortable situations. A lot of girls on this campus feel alone. I want them to feel like they have girls there for them. Alicia Ortolano and Caitlin Bakewell started the group LSU Girls Ride after Madison Brooks's death. A girl can send a message asking for a ride, and one of the group's female drivers will pick her up and take her where she needs to go for free. Alicia explained that she also had her personal reasons for starting the group outside of her love for Maddie. Well, I've also been personally abandoned and put in a vulnerable, scary situation, and I had to walk home. Young women are unfortunately all too often targeted by predatory men who exploit their vulnerability, particularly when alcohol is involved. These men may seek out women who are already heavily intoxicated and thus less able to fend off their advances. 
Or even more insidiously, they may actively ply women with drink after drink, or spike their drink with drugs in order to intentionally render them incapacitated. Regardless of the specifics, the common thread is a man taking advantage of a woman's inebriated state to sexually assault her when she cannot properly consent. If you or a friend have experienced this horrific situation, know that you are not alone, and it is not your fault. No matter how much you drank, or what circumstances led up to the assault, the blame lies squarely on the predator who chose to attack you. It's critical to have a strong support system to help you process this trauma. Don't suffer in silence or shame. Reach out to trusted loved ones who can affirm that you did nothing wrong and that you deserve justice and healing. Loves, if someone discloses to you that they've been sexually assaulted, believe them and offer your unconditional support. Let them know that you're there for them in whatever way they need, whether that's accompanying them to the hospital for a forensic exam, helping them file a police report, or just being a sympathetic ear. Encourage them to report the perpetrator if they feel able to, so that he can be held accountable and prevented from assaulting others. But respect your friend's choices and don't pressure them as coming forward is a very personal decision. Our focus needs to be on supporting victims, promoting a culture of consent and respect, encouraging bystander intervention, and holding those who commit sexual violence accountable. Only when we stop scrutinizing victims' behavior and start putting the responsibility squarely on perpetrators will we make progress in reducing these egregious crimes. My heart goes out to Maddie and her family. Let's just hope they find some justice for her and the time and space to heal from this unspeakable tragedy. Thanks for watching, you guys. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know similar stories? Let me know in a comment down below. And before you go, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. All right, see you next time.